All right, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Harrison's Garage. So today in the channel, we're going to be fixing a um, effect of changing the tires from 33s to 35s. In addition to adding the extra inch above and below the axle, we're also pushing the tire, uh, the wheel and tire out. The factory backspacing on those is like the offset rather is a plus 44, I think. Um, and the wheels that we have are a negative 12, so 44 and 12, uh, 56 millimeters um, farther out. So what that means for us is that this spare tire sits uh, an inch taller at the top, as well as an inch lower at the bottom, and 54 millimeters farther out. So coming in here, you'll see there's a pretty sizable gap between the tire and the bump stop. Now you could have a bump stop extension and just be done with it, However, I didn't want to do that for one main reason, and that is these guys. They have been beeping nonstop ever since I put this tire on here. Now I've seen uh, people say, oh, sometimes for whatever reason, they've taken the tire off, rotated it so that the valve stem is at the top or their tire weights are somewhere else and it takes care of the problem inexplicably. Tried that, didn't work. So anytime you put this in reverse, these backup sensors, you know, they seem to radiate or detect in a conical pattern or picking up the tire. So what we're gonna do is suck the tire back in 54 millimeters and then raise it up by installing the TerraFlex uh, adjustable spare tire mounting kit. So what this will do is replace this factory bracket with the TerraFlex one and relocate the third brake light to the center here. Now, if you have a four by eight like we do, there's also a speaker that is in here uh, that plays sort of like a whirring electric motor noise anytime you're in reverse uh, to try and uh, allow people to hear you when you're backing up at a low speed. Um, right now, I have a bracket on order uh, from TerraFlex that will integrate with this bracket to hold the speaker, but for now I'm gonna install everything uh, without that bracket and just keep the speaker um, over on the workbench and not leave it plugged in for now, just so the wife can back up and not lose her mind with the beeping. Okay, this is everything that comes in the box, and I will say it was very well packaged. Uh, everything was in um, you know, styrofoam, so it comes with the camera bracket, um, various hardware, other bracketry, this will be where the tire will mount to. And this is the actual bracket that bolts to the tailgate. Massive improvement over the plastic stock one. This is steel and it looks to be either painted or powder coated, something like that, but it's definitely a nice, nice finish. This is just the only plastic piece and it is removable. So hopefully, um, you know, it almost looks like it was made to be plastic so it wouldn't damage the finish on this so that's that's quite nice for the install you will need a t8 torx bit got that on here that is probably the only thing you may not have lying around everything else is pretty standard tool tool um, stuff that you might that you'll probably have at, at this point uh, in your garage uh, tape measure plastic trim removal tool dead blow quarter inch head uh, socket and I just have all the socket as you won't need all of these but uh, one and a half, a three millimeter and a four millimeter Allen key. Um, I've got a breaker bar simply because it's uh, convenient, but you don't need the breaker bar. Uh, this is going to be attached to my half inch deep socket, 19 millimeter deep socket to take the spare off. A T25, T30, and four millimeter socket Allen. And then really to take the camera off the back, or off the um, sort of plastic, uh, retainer off of this you need a 40 torque t40 um, I've actually been able to get it with my finger on occasion um, or using the t30 I have on bench is just fine so we're gonna go ahead take the spare tire off and then uh, once we get the spare tire off we're gonna pull off the uh, plastic bracket and then go through and take the trim piece off on the inside of the tailgate and pop off the wire. So we'll get going on that. Uh, 
Okay, you saw me take off the spare tire and buzz off all eight of these bolts. I left this one in just to keep this here for now. Came around to the backside and used two trim removal tools. Just, you know, get in here, use one to like kind of pull it back a little bit and the second one to wedge it in and then pop them out. All of these clips are definitely not the hardest clips I've ever had to deal with. They came out pretty straightforward, pretty quickly. So it's, it's not too much, uh, too much to work with there. So once you get this popped off, uh, and this kind of exposed. If you have the 4 by e you'll have an extra plug to undo. Otherwise, it's just going to be these two. So, one, two, and this is the speaker. So I'm going to take these three off and then pull the wiring harness out. We can close close the tailgate back up. So, but some of these guys have locking tabs. This one's also got a locking tab. So, pop up on the white tab here pop up on the red tab there, and then push down on this white one and pull it back, and then uh, you'll be able to get these guys off. So I'm gonna go ahead and use two hands, pull those out, meet back up with you on the workbench once I've got this along with the wiring assembly uh, for us to then disassemble the third brake light. Okay, I've got the uh, spare tire mount assembly on the workbench over here. Since I have a 4 by e, I have a little bit of a different setup inside than, say, a regular Jeep. There is a speaker, well, I guess this is the speaker, if you haven't seen it, that I was mentioning. Um, the wire for the speaker is here. It sits in this plug like so. To pop this connection off, you simply pull back on this uh, tab here. So this is fully connected, you pull back on the tab, tabs pull back, grab here, and uh, wiggle it off. And, uh, and uh, wiggle it off like that. Then you'll want to pop out the um, other clip here. Okay, once you've got the speaker unplugged, it sort of becomes like a normal Jeep. Uh, you've got the wire for the backup camera, and that's attached to this uh, retaining tab. Pull that back, clear that out. And then you'll have your harness here. Pull this free of that clip. And then next, the only wire is the third brake light. So we're going to flip this at this point back over and then we're going to take out all these T25 bits as well as these up here and that will allow us to not only separate this uh, third brake light assembly from the main spare tire mount we should also be able to back out these uh, studs that will need to be transferred over to the TerraFlex kit. Okay, so I've got the studs backed out, the T25s that held these in. Um, all I needed to do was take them out. There was no dead blow needed. This literally just popped right out. So put that back up there. Uh, the one thing I will say that's a little bit different for the newer Jeeps is the way the backup camera is mounted. It's not part of the stud assembly. Um, you know, everything else on the tail, on the third brake light, that's all T25s. This, I did have to use a, a non-marring pry bar to separate it um, from the back plate, but it did come right off. Wiring harness separated nicely there. But to get this out, the backup camera is not physically attached, as I mentioned. Flip this over, and you'll see this uh, plastic piece here. And here, this is all a separate piece from this main assembly, and that's the piece that the camera is mounted to, and the piece we need to uh, push on. So if you push on this sort of plastic ring and these uh, plastic rings here and here, this camera should just drop right out. So I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera. I'm going to use two, maybe two hands, and, and try and get this to drop down onto the workbench below. 
Okay, this does appear to be different for the newer 21, 22 Jeeps over the you know 20 prior years. This camera assembly, um, like I said, pushed down really hard on those pieces. What I ended up doing was taking a 17 deep socket uh, and pushing it through, letting that sit there. A uh, 11 deep socket and a 12 deep socket and just kind of smashing that through getting enough leverage is way way harder than what you could do with your fingers you really need to push quite firmly um, enough to the point where I was you know flexing the bench uh, in order to get this hard plastic piece to drop down uh, and then we'll be disconnecting the camera next okay another item that's different on these newer Jeeps you no longer need the T8 Torx bit uh, you just have a T25 so there is this bracket that connects there that holds the backup camera in place pull that out via removing the T25 torque screw put that aside and then pull the entire harness through the camera will not fit by feeding it back that way don't need that anymore uh, go ahead and remove the wire from the camera and we'll get started on assembling the new TerraFlex bracket, finally. All right, the next step here will be to grab the mount for the backup camera, feed the harness through uh, the back here, and then plug in the backup camera. I found the best way to unplug the camera was using a pair of needle nose pliers to press down on this tab. Um, and then the camera just easily came right off. So plug this back in. Once you've got it plugged in, sink it back down into the mount. Okay, after you have the camera connected again, you'll have a bracket that comes with, it looks like this, it comes with the kit. It's got uh, three three different holes on it, one, uh, one here, one at the bottom, and one on the left, that will correspond with the holes in the mount. So feed the bracket of the camera through, and then you'll be using these tiny, uh, very tiny, one and a half millimeter screws uh, in here. There you go you can see where this is going to mount up. So once you get that mounted up, uh, you'll then take this uh, cover bracket, cover plate, take the cover plate and put it on here and that will keep the camera uh, protected and uh, you'll be ready to move on to the next step after that. So I'll meet you up once I've got these screws in here. Okay, so I've just attached this final cover for the brake light, that's good to go. I also plugged this back in and checked on the Jeep. The camera is in fact the right way up. I didn't want to get all of this done and put away and then find out the camera was upside down. The next step is to put the third brake light on. These pins will line up with these holes and then we will use the... There we go. Then we'll use the factory hardware to put this down. Okay, so the third brake light is going to mount over the uh, assembly here for, for the backup camera. Now, you're going to need to sort of put that on and, and connect the brake light to the harness connector before you actually attach it to the mount. Um, just the way the brake light is, there's no way you're going to get your hands in there beforehand, so it's just way easier to do it that way. So I've fish this through the opening in the back. This is the connector for the third brake light, run it through there. All you gotta do is then uh, connect these like so with the factory mounting bolts and uh, we'll be good to go for the next step. Okay, I thought I'd catch you up. I've got the sort of adjustable portion mounted into the bracket loosely. Um, I'm not sure really how I want to have this yet. Uh, this is a 12 pointed bolt. Um, so you're going to want to have a 10 millimeter socket, deep socket like this. I just happen to have these. Um, you'll want to have those to tighten these up later. I don't know if I'm going to have this pointed this way or if this is going to have to stick out. 
and point this way. Although for now, I have a suspicion it's gonna need to be this way and have it all the way sucked in simply because we have such a big offset on the wheel. Um, but I'm leaving it adjustable for now until we go over and measure on the wheel, uh, which will be you know one of the future steps. I've got the uh, 17 millimeter hex head here and the plate nut plate on the other side uh, and what we're going to do next is start threading the um, studs into place for the tie for the wheel now as far as which ones you'll want to be in the bottom holes are great for a 31 to 33 inch tire uh, the middle hole here, middle hole, middle hole, these are going to be what we're using for a 34 to 36 inch tire. We got 35s. Now, these top holes are for 37 to 39. So, um, if you, by the way, if you have a, a metal bumper as opposed to a uh, factory plastic one, the max capacity is subtract an inch from everything I just said. So, instead of 39, this will be 38, this will be 34, and this will be uh, 32. So what I'm gonna do next is set this up, get Loctite on these studs, uh, hand thread in the shorter end, and then use a, uh, I guess two nuts, and sort of double nut it, and then tighten this down with an open-ended wrench. So I'll set you up on hyperlapse and get that done. Okay, we've got our studs fully threaded and sat down. I did break out my, uh, half inch driver looks like a 22 is what goes over this guy just to get a little extra leverage on it so these are the middle studs hopefully this will be high enough to get the tire away from the backup sensor uh, if not I'll have to break these loose and then uh, put some more Loctite on them later okay so after getting the studs installed the next step is physically to mount the bracket on the Jeep I had some sticky rubber pads um, with a smooth surface here that I put on here since this bracket appears to simply directly mount to the painted surface and I did not want to put this straight on the paint so I've got those sort of you know two millimeter thick rubber pads so I'm gonna go ahead and take this over uh, and then get this buzzed on and come back with you once we are ready to move forward Okay, so the next step is to take a piece of straight, straight wood, or metal, if you have one long enough, I don't. So this is a uh, piece of red oak stair tread that I checked, perfectly uh, flat, so stretch it across the wheel. Measure from the inside mounting surface to the edge of the board, and for me, uh, it's about five and five eighths. Um, I'm going to then test that distance because it will be five and five eighths from the back of this plate but I did notice these bump stops stick out about uh, three eighths beyond the back of this plate so I'm about five and three quarters I'm gonna see if it threads on here and squishes these down a little bit um, just as I want otherwise um, once I get done test fitting that I'm gonna tighten down this bolt here tighten down this bolt and then add the other bolt uh, on the other side of this guy. Okay, so this is now secured. I've ran the wiring back through the grommet. All you gotta do next is put them back the way they came off, and next put the trim piece back on, and uh, tighten down all these bolts. I'll come back with you once the wheel is mounted, and we are putting the third brake light on. All right, guys, I've got the spare mounted. Uh, the lugs are torqued and we're going to be putting the third brake light back on here is the uh, spot where we need to make our connection to the brake light um, one of the really the only main or only fault I can find with this particular mount is that in order to remove the tire itself you need to open up this quicker lever and then disconnect the brake light from the cable and then stick the cable back down in here, pull the tire off, pull the tire off, put it back on, that type of thing. So if you're gonna be doing this, you are gonna to have to make that connection every time. Now, getting your finger in here, pretty dang difficult. 
Uh, I'm going to be using a hook, a metal hook. It's actually a crochet hook, um, but it's perfect for this scenario. You put it in, grab the, grab the wire, pull it out. Very straightforward, super easy. So if you have this, you hate it already because of this problem, just get a crochet hook. They're from Michaels for like a dollar. Um, great to have on hand. It's, it's saved my saved me quite a few times in the past uh, about you know fishing wires out of you know, getting them stuck somewhere getting a wire harness stuck and something like that so I'm gonna go ahead and then just take it if you go if you want it to go through this opening it's a lot harder uh, simply because you can't actually pull this out uh, until you get this on here which is really really impossible so I'm just gonna take it and go around the opening around this way click it on here and uh, stick it on that way so go ahead I'm using the opening as a uh, way to maneuver my fingers in here get that clicked so now I can simply tuck the wire into the crevice and then uh, feed this through, feed this on, give ourselves about a couple of millimeters between the wheel and the back of the brake light, make sure it's straight up and down, and then squeeze this lever. Now I've already pre you know, adjusted this side, this nut, so that it's going to close firmly. Being plastic, I didn't want to wrench on it too hard, um, I just thought the plastic might fatigue over time, so... Okay, so that is spare tire mounted, third brake light on. Now, I do want to mention, I checked earlier, and having it, had, having the studs um, in this second hole uh, did not work. Now, let me show you what I mean. I had plenty of space down here for that clearance. However, um, you know, in the, in the second stud, however, it was not high enough. The tire was not high enough to avoid these backup sensors uh, from beeping. So what I'm gonna do is hop in the Jeep and then show you now that with this uh, spare tire carrier, you can avoid, you know, you can keep the backup sensors working properly by putting it up. What I do is I put it up at the highest, I put the studs in the tallest one. If you're wondering why it's rattling, I haven't put the, uh, I haven't torqued it down yet, but um, it does allow for a three nine inch tire, as you can see, but um, I had to go up that high just to clearance the factory backup sensor. So I'm gonna hop in the Jeep now and then uh, show you how it looks. Okay, we're here in the Jeep. Uh, got the engine running, put it in reverse. And before any time I would take my foot off of the brake, these sensors would go nuts. So let's give it a shot here and start moving back. So there we go. No backup sensors, no beeping. Problem solved. All right guys, that is the install complete of the TerraFlex JL adjustable spare tire mounting kit. So if you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and as always, stay tuned for more.